name? Zaritsky? David Zaritsky? Uh, I do not see a David Zaritsky here. I see an Ellis. I see Ashlyn. I even see a Danielle. No, no David Zaritsky. Joe. Joe. This... This is my basement. Uh, first of all, it's head of section, sir. Second of all, this collection is on lockdown until the premiere of the movie. Look... This is this this is my house, okay? You're in my house. This is my collection. Uh, sir, I can give you 15 minutes, but you're gonna have to wear a badge like everybody else. <laughs> this is what the year is gonna be like. Oh, mother pus bucket! No! <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hello, David Zritsky for the Bond Experience and... Joe Darlington, being James Bond. Joe, do you know what today is? I do. What is it? It is 2020, officially. Holy cow, it's January 1st! <laughs> oh. I, didn't, I didn't think we'd ever see this day. Certainly I didn't think you would see this day. This is, yeah, who, who, who would have guessed? Uh, you, guessed? Were, you were definitely in my Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't blame it. But Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, buddy. Come here, man. Come here, <laughs> give me a hug. Oh my gosh. What an amazing 2019 we had. <sighs> but I'm, Seriously. I'm looking forward to 2020. Yeah. Right. And that's what this video is all about. So this is a. Let, let me, let me just set the stage a little bit. This is a part one and part two. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a part one discussion. We're gonna be looking back on 2019. We're gonna be talking about our favorite moments, our not so favorite moments. There's gonna be a lot of controversy, a lot of fighting. There's gonna be <laughs> blood everywhere. Uh, just gonna be awful DNA. And then we're gonna be also talking then about uh, 2020. Like, what mm -hmm. are those things that we're looking forward yeah. to? What are those things that we can expect? And that's gonna yeah. be in our part two. So part one is here at the Bond Experience. And Joe, I wanted to, I wanted to do something nice for you. What's that? Because you deserve it. Well, I, I, I uh, what? Me, and, me and the people at Bollinger, they, they, they got us a nice ice cold bottle of Bali. <sighs> oh my goodness. I wasn't with you oh last night. I'm so year glad happened. I brought a glass so we can. Uh... Well, you bring a glass everywhere just in case, don't you? Your, <laughs> your liver demands it. You never so know. So we're going we're gonna to pop the Bollinger. Oh and, uh, you know, as everybody knows, Bollinger is, is a nice official sponsor. Not of us. <laughs> of no time to die. There you go. By the way, if Bollinger wants to send us a case, this is true. We'll be more than happy to drink it for you. I mean, promote it. I mean, you'll you'll give him your address, right? All right, here we go. Here we go. This is this is happening, real time, folks. Look at you backing away, <laughs> dude. I am good at this. I'm gonna put a hole in my uh, in my ceiling. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, mother pus bucket. There was there was a lot of there was a lot of champagne. No, no. We'll pour it. It's too cold. Oh my gosh, guys, this was absolutely the wrong way. So we've got to describe this for you. We we have this in the freezer. We're having slushies. Because we wanted this to get ice cold, and it literally froze. <laughs> I should have let this warm up a little bit. Oh, this is terrible! Oh my gosh, I need to get a towel. I'm gonna. I'll, it, it's just coming out. Are we good? Um, hold on a second. I'm gonna freeze this for a second. It's literally, we have now champagne slushies <laughs> that are going on here, and you can't finally, say it's not cold. All right, I, I have to apologize to Bollinger because this is not the right way to drink their wonderful champagne. I have little shards of ice in my, uh, my glass. All right, I gotta tell you something. So, so this is, <laughs> this is I think how 2020 is gonna go. Uh, yeah. I think we're gonna, we're gonna create these we amazing the tone. experiences and they're not always going to go the way we <laughs> thought they were going to go and that's okay, isn't but it? But we roll with the punches is what we do. We, we improvise like James Bond. We do, we do. All right, first of all, I mean, let's let's toast our slushies. <laughs> Cheers, brother. To thank you for an amazing 2019 mm -hmm. and friendship and you here's too? to 2020. Amen. Oh my god, it's like a 7-Eleven Slurpee. But it's still good. It's very good. Yeah. Wow. All right, we'll, we'll let we'll let our Bollinger warm up. <laughs> Holy cow, was that a foo bar? Um, so Joe, let me let me start with this. And let's let's start with the positive because I think you and I have always um, felt very passionate about being 
some positive aspects mm -hmm. in the Bond community. Tell us about your fondest memory from a Bond standpoint of 2019. And, and you've got to pick one. That's the hard part. Well, I, well, honestly, for me, picking one moment is actually very easy. Oh. Um, but That's something with me. But I should preface. Actually, no. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I should preface by saying that we had tremendous, tremendous memories in 2019. Yeah. I mean, we had so many phenomenal Bond gatherings. Uh, we had pr product launches that we attended. Yeah. Um, we had a more impromptu, non-formal gathering, which was a wild success. Yeah. Sure. which was so much fun meeting i mean getting to see all our regular bond buddies yeah. our crew and meeting new ones was was absolutely tremendous uh i had incredible travel experiences this year i i did the honor majesties i did portugal and switzerland yeah and honestly the best part again meeting up and spending time with some old friends that i only see halfway around the world um, but the specifically the Switzerland part, I got to meet a lot more people that I had not met yet. Some people that we talk over Facebook or Instagram, etc. Yeah. Finally, got to put put the put the face to the um, to the avatar or whatever you call it. Um, and again, just spectacular luck in just meeting great people. Like like people I would like I met a couple guys. Like the next time I go to Ireland, I'm calling and being like. I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. Right, right. That's all I got to tell you. Yeah. Fix me up. Let me know where I'm staying, et cetera. Um, and, of course, we did the London trip. Yes. Which was incredible. And, yeah. again, met a lot of the influencers on the other side of the ocean Yeah. that, again, I know from from their YouTube channels, social media, et cetera, finally got to spend actual time with. It was just yeah. a thrill beyond a thrill. And by the way, you're following instructions incredibly well when I said pick one. <laughs> and you're literally <laughs> listing your entire resume well, I, of well, 2019. I, yeah, yeah. But well, you're getting to it. I know. I, well, I there know. you go. Yeah. I mean, basically, I didn't want to discount it again. It was it was such right. a robust year. I mean, that's that's my opening statement, as oh. they would say in the debate. Um, but my, I mean, the peak, pun semi-intended, yeah. occurred at BizGloria. And I did the 50th anniversary celebration i mean the whole trip yeah. was a lead up to this event and it was just off the hook like yeah. off amazing the hook. looking and i know you've talked about it but that's so that's your number one that's my that's my number one yeah, yeah. And, and probably I mean, it's it's also one that it's not just about 2019 that that might be a lifetime event honestly it's gonna be hard to surpass that it it will be hard to surpass that i mean yeah. i mean you're literally talking about you're, you're talking about my favorite f film I mean, right. I feel like it's that is like Bond film or non-Bond film alike. Yeah. Easily my favorite for, for decades. Uh, at the location where it happened, yes. with the people who were in it, with the, the biggest Bond, again, um, people. Yeah. Um, with James Bond. With the actual James Bond, who at that point I had literally spent the whole week with. I mean, literally Crazy. like the whole time in Portugal, the end of every night. Yeah. We're sitting there at the, po at the bar throwing back one and there's George sitting right here um, off the hook and then capped off with the Keeley Music Concert and I'm yeah. like I'm like I'm in Piz Gloria yeah at the place where this all happened I mean again this will never happen again so it's insane just off the hook yeah I, I will say um, that that's been amazing to watch from afar my number one though for me has to be um, my trip to London when um, we went to Secret Cinema yeah. together, a bunch of us. Super and cool. Yeah, I'll tell you why I liked the trip to London. It, it was so multifaceted. First of all, you know, we had a little preamble where a, a lot of the people that some I've known for years, some I didn't know at all, but I've been following them. I've been, I, mm. I have been a fan of yeah. them, watching their YouTubes or listening to their podcasts, and suddenly I was meeting them and listening to them talk and having a beer with them and just yeah. doing just everything day things with them and then we went to secret cinema and that was amazing and then the next day um i had the uh, honor and the pleasure of taking them on a bond brand tour so mm. to me it was like taking 
all of these people who I've been a fan of, and I, I, I can't use that word enough, I've been a fan of these individuals for so long, and taking them into my world. And I remember mm. um, AJ, AJ oh. Shadray, saying to me at the end of the day, he goes, you know, David, I, I'm not going to do my AJ impression. <laughs> that was close. He's got a really good impre- uh, voice. But he said to me, he goes, you know, I've never understood, or I've never been a part of the fashion or brand or accessory world. But you've introduced it to me, and now I'm a part of it. Mm. Like, I get it. Like, I'm excited. And and I have another piece of knowledge. And to me, that was the trip where I really knew that no matter who you are in the Bond community, whether you're a fan or a quote-unquote influencer or podcast or vlogger, whatever you are, you have something to gain from every engagement and interaction. Mm. And to me, that was the... I've had many since then and before then, yeah. but to me, that was like the pinnacle of just like experiencing it with everybody. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. We've we've created fast friends because of that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, again, I, I feel like I say it over and over, but it's it's the people in this community that are really making what it is. And we're, it's just kind of... I don't know if it's dumb luck or not, or or if there's something about James Bond that draws the right people. Yeah. Uh, but that, yeah, that whole experience. First of all, the Secret Cinema itself was a blast. Yeah. I mean, that was tremendous. I mean, seriously, you want to talk about, like, I mean, my two favorite films that are tied for first place. Right. Are Honor, Majesty, Secret Service, and Casino Royale. Yes. So in a very short amount of time, I got to do an Honor Majesty's experience, and then this Secret Cinema Casino Royale which I thought just was a grand slam home run. Yeah. And I had so much fun doing it that I can't wait to do it again. Uh, and you, again... You set the bar so high, which uh, almost makes... Which we're not going to get into yet, but it makes 2020 a little intimidating. It's Yes, that's a good word for it. It's going to be a challenge to, to make uh, this year, um, y- you know, kind of like how we were talking, you know, only a little while ago about how... We hope no time to die it doesn't have to surpass Casino Royale. No, but if it's in the ballpark, you if know, it's somewhere between Skyfall and Quantum, we'd we'd be okay go. with it. Right. Um, so if my 2020 is just, just even in the the range of 2019, I'll yeah. be a happy guy. I agree. Um, but that but that trip was just tremendous for the reasons you said. Again, the the event itself was wild. Yeah. But on top of that, we did it with. All of these other YouTubers, content creators, yeah. influencers, authors, YouTubers, again, people that I've known for quite a while from a distance, now I'm spending time with and, and getting to know and talk to and hang out with. So, it was, I mean, honestly, I felt like for all of the people that I met this year, all the different trips locally, um, over here abroad, over here abroad, uh, I kind of felt like, geez, I mean, my, 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 list of contacts my little black book is has like doubled Your in little size black book i think that's a dating thing <laughs> that's well it's yeah i'm showing my JB age by even knowing that JB uh, yeah, that's coming out in a different video <laughs> by, by the way um as much as we had to kick this off in a very positive fashion you know our best memories we've got to talk about um kind of our darkest memories because i mean every year we're humans mm. and we're fallible and you know this is not always going to be good i'm going to start off so my darkest memory mm. of the year has got to be uh, the whole divisiveness that was created around some of what I believe the media has stirred up around what is Bond going to be? Uh, is Bond going to be woke? Is it a feminist thing? Is it a, a misogynistic? You know, hey guys, here, here's your raw meat, go and talk. And I found that, you know, brothers and sisters that were, you know, cuddling together suddenly the very next day were fisticuffing or worse looking for those opportunities to fight and to me if I look back in a holistic way for the entire year those whether it was three or four weeks I can't even remember I'm trying to put it out of my memory those were those were some dark moments yeah it it definitely got weird it's it's (laughs) it got weird it got weird didn't it yeah um (laughs) So, but yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree with that. And yeah, it's frustrating because, you know, we are sort of living in a, um, uh, you know, the, the political thing that's going on and everyone now seems to have a horse in the race. Yeah. And that race has crept into our, our entertainment and in our case, our little refuge from yeah. the world. So yeah, it was a little... That was a little frustrating. I, I think for the most part, we kind of came out unscathed. We did. You know, I, I, I felt like that trailer did an awful lot to sort of calm people's nerves. Yeah. Um, you only lost one friend in it, right? 
Um, did I lose a friend? I don't. I. I. I no, I didn't. I don't, no, I'm good. <laughs> that was a bait. That was like. Eh, eh. <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah. No. No. I honestly. In fact. In fact, I was very impressed with how. Um, I mean, there were there were moments when it was starting. I I was nervous that it was really starting to get kind of ugly, mm. and mm -hmm. you know, you know, well, this one said this. Oh, this one's friends with the one who said this, and now yes. we got. And I was like, and I, that was starting to make me nervous. And I was like, let's all right, let's not do that, please. Right. And and then there were one, there was once or twice when I kind of reached out, you know, to to some of my friends, you know, yeah. who, again who feel different. And again, I'm very proud to say that I have I have a wide acquaintance of people who. Don't have to feel the same way as I do about things. Yes. So it's very easy to say, hey, hey guys, are we are we getting a little carried away here? Can we can we all get, get, get sit back down at the table and talk? Um, and, and again, I think the response was always good. You yeah. know, I never had a bad experience with that. Uh, so I'm very happy again with the with the people that we yeah. call friends. We we actually did a, a video, Joe and I, and, and actually my daughter Ashlyn. That's yeah. not out yet by the time you're watching this, but it will be out. And one of the things we discussed is that. You know, as as divisive as that moment was, as caustic was as it was, as dark as it was, we actually came out the other side probably a little bit stronger because mm. a lot of people agreed that you do not have to agree. Like yeah. not everything has to be on the same page, and that's what yeah. makes it incredible. We're mm. not we're not fisticuffing and warring, which has been really nice. Yeah. So so in that mix, and I think it sounds like we shared the kind of you know worst memory. There's when we talk about the Bond community, we talk about uh, podcasts, we talk about channels, mm -hmm. we talk about events, and we talk a lot about people. Mm. So out of that, what what was the best example of the Bond community as the definition of the of the Bond community coming together in your mind in 2019? And it could be people. It could be like this podcaster was amazing, mm. or that gentleman really showed his 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 spots in a positive yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Like what was the best? Um. I'll give you a kind of a, a weird answer because I, I, I don't know if I would call this the best because it was sort of a well, not a great moment. Right. But the rallying cry that came from it yeah. was something. And that was when Chris backed out of James Bond Radio. Oh, wow. That's a good one. And, you know, yeah. And it was a moment where, honestly, like that really kind of, I remember exact. I was literally driving to Cape Cod when that happened with my mm -hmm. girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And it kind of came over the social media. You know, thank God for our cell phones now that you can never escape for five seconds. Um, but when it happened, I remember kind of going, oh, wow. And there was a big outcry. Like a lot of people said, oh, yeah. wow. People, some pe people were devastated. And a lot of people came out and said, did you hear? And it's like, yeah, I heard. So again, it was, again, sad to see Chris need to take a break for a little while. Hopefully it won't be forever. Um, was happy to see James Bond Radio rallied and said, okay, well, we're going to keep on going. The, the, there's always there's always an empty chair for Chris whenever he wants to come back, but they yeah. decided to keep on going. But honestly, it was it was the the outcry that that came from that and made, made me sort of realize like just how many people we love that show. How how they were affected, and again, it just it was kind of one of those moments where, you know, when something happens in the community, everyone kind of reacts and says, yeah. you know, I'm here, you know, and I and I, I know uh, Tom will probably tell you that a lot of people reached out and said, listen, I hope you're doing it right, and hope yeah. Chris is doing okay, and etc. And he's, yeah, he's doing fine. But it was it was it was sort of an odd wake up call. Like, wow, the community really does rally when when things happen. I agree. I, I first of all, I didn't. I didn't even think about that, but mm. that is an excellent, excellent example. And and again, how Tom and all the new members of JBR bootstrapped themselves mm. and have created something um, different. Just yeah. you know, not the same thing. You know, it's yeah. not the same. It's not a, a Chris impersonation yeah. or anything. It's you know, 2 it's, it's two point It's It's really you know an evolution. It's not better. It's different. That's a great one. I, mm. So so one for me, and this is going to be very. I think it's personal. Mm. Right? So that's why I'm calling it out. And actually, I have to be a little like um, neutral with this. I'm not even going to say the gentleman's name, but there was a gentleman who reached out to me on Facebook and had said, um, wrote this long thing to me, and it was actually well thought out. And he said, you know, David, it's great what you're doing in the Bond community. You've carved out kind of a, a new corner of the Bond world and appreciation. And I sort of get it. And he was very honest. He goes, I sort of get it, what you're doing. He goes, but what you're doing with events and things like that make people feel like it's elite. Like mm -hmm. there's something else going on here. And it, it actually forced me 
to, first of all, make some admissions like, number one, I have no official connection to Eon, number right, one. Right, right, yeah. Number two, the events are usually me just inviting a bunch of my goofy friends together. Mm -hmm. um, and, and number three, it, it also kind of said, you know something, I should just open up the world a little bit. Yeah. And that's why we, we did Operation Gatherall, yeah. which was an open invite to nobody in particular, but anybody that wanted to show up to my hometown of Newtown, Pennsylvania. And people showed up. We had 40, 45 people connect. And yeah. we made new friends. We reconnected with old friends. And then mm -hmm. we, we live streamed the rest of it. Yeah. And I have to thank that gentleman because, you know, he kind of put a mirror up to me, which I think sometimes we need to see, sure. like, what, how are we connecting and engaging with others? But right, right. who are we leaving maybe on the sidelines? And I'm so passionate about making sure that everybody feels a part of the yeah. Bond community and not ostracized. Yeah. And I, I can vouch for that. I can absolutely vouch for that. And, and yeah, that was a great... You, you turn something that was, okay, maybe not perfect, but into something that was really great. And that was, again, I, I again, I, I feel like I, and by the way, I, I was told I got to stop saying again, and I will work on that, I swear. I said to that. You, you've told me that years ago, it's actually. Your, it's your safety word. Yes, yeah, it's my, fil my filler word. Mine is particular <laughs> and sartorial, which I need to kill that, too. Um, but we, again, the whole, I did it again. Sorry. Bingo. As I was saying, uh, <laughs> yes, the year was filled up with a lot of great moments where I got to meet new people, and yes. as if that wasn't enough, we had that really great event where, again, like you said, like you said, okay. we just had <laughs> uh, just whoever whoever's around. If you're in the area, and some people came from pretty far, by the way, Nova Scotia, West Coast, Canada, yeah, yeah. crazy. They, it, it was an open invite. Come on, and people did. So I got to meet even more people that I hadn't met before. So it was really I, my world has expanded this year a lot. And you know something, as we were talking about this, there was going to be a topic where we discussed the worst part of the Bond community. Mm. And what we decided was we weren't going to give that a lot of oxygen. Hmm. Because if we start yeah. to talk about the worst of the Bond community, yeah. it, t it tends to prop it up. So right, right. we'll just neutralize that and, yeah. and focus on the positive. And, it, and it's 0.0001% anyway. I know. It's, it's Isn't been that overwhelmingly nice? overwhelmingly positive, yes. It is so positive. And by the way, even for those that have disagreements with people, I find that a phone call or a text yeah. message, or meeting them even better for a beer in person, yeah, yeah. literally neutralizes that. You figure yeah. like, oh, this isn't the asshole I thought he right. was going to be, or yeah. she was going to be. Great point. Which is great. All right, now we're going to get to some fun parts. I'm going to really put you on the spot, and you can put me on the spot. <laughs> so um, there's been, let's face it, Eon and, and James Bond as a franchise, it is a business. It's yeah. a machine. I mean, mm -hmm. we, for us, it's a passion and a love. Yeah. But uh, there's been a lot of products, and I'm sure there's going to be even more in 2020. Mm. So talk to me, out of all the products from a marketing standpoint, mm. um, and, and this could include events, what was the best product or event that was uh, authorized, you know, mm. Eon approved, if you will, okay. for uh, yeah. 2019? Um, that's interesting. Well, I mean, there's Funko there's, Pops. There's a, <laughs> we, we love our Funko Pops. Um, we, I, well, I mean, there were two big ones, obviously, that come to mind. And I thought that we had, I mean, both of them were kind enough to invite us to their showroom in New York. Mm. So we got to see them sort of up close and personal. Uh, and yeah, I thought they were pretty spectacular, frankly. Honestly, and obviously the two I'm talking about, Olabar Brown mm -hmm. had quite a lineup of Bond inspired clothing yeah. and again stuff that we just eat up. Yeah. So I thought that was terrific and they were actually very nice enough to offer all of us who went one free thing. They basically yeah. said Wish list. Right. What's, your, what do you what's want? on your wish list? We yeah. will give you one one present. And they did. It was it was great. And and again, it's I think it's a it's a pricey you know, it's not for everybody, but I thought, you know, for a high-end brand that, that wants to embrace James Bond, I thought they nailed it. I mean, I thought the yes. stuff that they did was terrific. Um, obviously, the other one was NPL, and honestly, yeah. I thought, now that was that one was very interesting, because I thought, for a brand that is very specialized, that does cashmere, well, how many times did Bond wear cashmere? How many times can you... But I was pretty impressed with, with the lineup that they came out with. Yeah. Um, my personal favorites were the two from Honor Majesties, the 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 light blue. Uh, oh yeah, inspired yep. by the ski outfit that Bond yes. wears, um, and also the 
um, the brown bomber jacket that goes over yeah. the orange uh, yeah, turtleneck. Yeah, the Secret Service. And, yeah. I, and I remember thinking, in fact, we even talked about it when we did our video about the the um, the firsts for each actor. Yes. And of course, the one and only for Lazenby was that one. And you mentioned the clothing, and I kind of was like, eh, I wasn't really crazy about the clothing. Yeah. And you liked it. And then once this stuff came out, I kind of was like, you know what, now I'm kind of getting it. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of getting it, and I'm warmed up to it. Right. So, but it was, and again, just two more chances for us to get together with a lot of other Bond people yeah. and just have a great afternoon. I mean, I, I, I have to agree, of course, it's not going to surprise anybody watching this right now. I think Oliver Brown and N. Peel, several things that I liked. First of all, they created an event around the product. Mm. It wasn't just about a product. It wasn't just about, hey, it's up for sale. Go, go, go for it, guys. Yeah. They really reached out to us and said, you know something? You know the mind and the hearts and the pulse of the Bond fan and the mm -hmm. Bond, you know, appreciator of these items. So we're going to let you have a lot of sway, if you will, mm. excuse the pun, uh, to create the event itself. So NPL and Oliver Brown, I think, did a wonderful job. I think also in, in creating those lines, they use the fans yeah. and as uh, consultants, if you will, not paid. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. Um, but more like, hey, what would you guys like? And we're just taking a litmus test. And mm. to me, I think that's so incredible. And I think more mm. brands should reach out and do that. I, I do believe I think they had the best products because to me it was also imaginative. Mm. They said not just, you know, what does it exist? And these are, you know, screen accurate, but it's an inspiration. Yeah. It's an entire line that we could all play in. Um, and, and to me, I think I gravitated to those two as well. So we're totally congruent. But let me let me toss this subject up to you. Uh, we've seen some a lot of products come out. If you look at 007.com hmm. and things like that, what do you what do you think was the worst product of 2019? The worst or the worst product. offering. You want I me to go first on this? Yeah, go for it. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious now to see where you're going with this. I'm, I'm going to have to say it was the $5,000 backgammon set. Oh, right, right, and, and right. And for a lot of different reasons. First of all, um, I think the release of it was literally like, here's a backgammon set for $5,000 with no aplomb or no direct correlation to Bond. But the thing is, too, it's like, if you came at me and said, you know something, we are replicating the exact backgammon set mm. from Octopussy. Yeah. With all these accoutrements, and it's going to come even with an egg that he puts down. Right. And you create the scene, and you say to me, you know something, guys? It's this much because we're going to recreate that scene for you because we know your passion. They didn't do that. <laughs> they said, we are, we're having a limited edition, and because there's only a certain amount, that's why you need to pay us $5,000. <laughs> that should never be a reason to charge money. Luxury yeah. products should have a value proposition that com connects emotionally and functionally with a person, yeah. and they miss the boat on that. And I looked at that from afar like, guys, I can't support this. Yeah. Like, don't don't even try. Yeah, I, I, I'm i with you there. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure probably, they, what would they make, 10? Something like they that. They probably gave away the uh, 007. Yeah, I think they so have like nine. Are, nine over. are probably still available yeah, if you want it. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> blowing yeah. the dust off. <laughs> yeah, I, when I heard that, I was like, you, you ha I mean, and again, you know, it's funny because it's not like we're completely unfamiliar with high-end luxury items that are right. like again pricey, etc. But that was just like you have to be kidding. Um, so I kind of don't even know where they were going with that one. I agree. The other thing, and, and wasn't there also um, an Aston Martin that was sold this year for the Lego one? No, 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 not not that. Like oh, an the actual Eagle, one. The Eagle Moss one. Oh, the the actual one that doesn't drive anywhere. It literally doesn't drive. It yes. has to stay still and you can't yes. put it on the road. And yes. how much does that one cost? Oh. It was like a million bucks for it or something? Something like that. 1.2 or yeah. 1.5. For a car that doesn't drive. And again, so that's got to be your number one. I, I think that's, that's yeah, I, right. Yeah. I mean, five. That's a good one. I, I, almost, I Again, at least, at least the Aston Martin is, I, yeah, I guess I don't know which one is worse now that I think about it. A backgammon set for $5,000 or a car that doesn't drive for a million dollars. I mean, for a million dollars, you should get an engine. <laughs> and, and wheels that spin, I, I, yes. I would think. Well, literally, how hard would that have been? That's like at that saying point? I've got to, you know, hear it. We're sitting in my collection in front of the No Time to Die. Yeah. I literally have to put a hole in my um, <laughs> house, yeah. drive the Aston Martin, and it's going to sit here forever. Right. And people come down and go, "Cool, check right. it out." Yeah. Zeritsky paid too much. Yeah. It's there. So I mean, if you go to Spice Cave, you can literally see an Aston Martin sitting there. Yeah, for for a and it won't cost you a million dollars to see it. 
I, I agree. I think I think you beat me on the backgammon. I'm going to give you that one. <laughs> right. I remember there was two this year that were like that. They kind of, I, I was like, you, are you really, this is how much this costs? Yeah. So we're, we're going to still stay in 2019. No, please, drink the Bollinger, because now it's not a slushy. It's actually melted. Yes. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, brother. Um, so there's been a lot of speculation around No Time to Die. That's why mm. we're sitting in front of it. Lots of speculation. Every single week seems yeah. to have new speculation. What's your favorite speculation that you've heard this year around No Time to Die? Or last year, I should say. My favorite speculation. Like um, the one that was like, ooh, that's cool, <clears throat> or that's dead on, or... Um, that's an interesting question. I, 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 feel like, I feel like the elephant in the room is the whether or not we think um, uh, Remy Malik is actually playing Dr. No. Right. And <clears throat> I kind of find that I'm enjoying the conversation there a little, a lot. Yes. Um, because I feel like there are a lot of clues being given by Eon. You know, the, the, the trailer gives clues. Right. And I kind of feel like, well, either they're more or less telling us straight out, yes, it's Dr. No, we're not going to try that whole Blofeld thing this time where we're, no, no, it's not Blofeld. Yeah, it's Blofeld. Um, so either they're kind of just giving us a little, you know, like I said, a little tip off early that, yeah, yeah, we're going that way. Or they're full blown going total bait and switch where they're leading us down that road and then surprise it's not. Right. Or maybe, so, or maybe something else is. Do you think he's Dr. No? Uh, I am going with that he is, yeah. I, I believe that's exactly I what they're doing. I hope it makes sense, storyline. If they're going to do that, I'm not. it's not my favorite. I honestly but... I honestly have been talking to people, f even b before Spectre, right. who speculated that, and not that I think they put this much thought into it, but I, I've heard people speculate that the way they will end the whole Craig run, because again, mm -hmm. it literally starts from the time he gets his double O. Yes. I've heard people say that this series will end with Bonsing in M's office, being told about uh, a madman in Jamaica um, that we have to, that you're going to send Bond off on this mission to Jamaica, and I thought, man, that's interesting. Hmm. So when this came Full up, circle. yeah, like literally, like this was literally going to be like a prequel series, yes, right before the opening of Doctor No, right. Um, so and I liked the idea. Never thought they would actually do it. Um, so when I heard Dr. No, I kind of went, hey, wait a second, where have I heard this before? Yeah. So I'm kind of on board. Again, and, and we've sort of talked about how it doesn't have to be a literal interpretation of Dr. No. Yeah. They can modernize and put a new spin on it. So if that's the case, I'm kind of open to it. That's a good one, yeah. And my, my, my favorite, and it's not um, widely known or popular, and I hope it's not a spoiler alert, but um, is the, the Madeline story and that the fact that Madeline actually is one of the individuals that has been working with Blofeld that the, mm. the whole Safran character you know when she uh, it potentially breaks through the ice you know in this coat right here that that's the Madeline backstory and Safran mm. rescues her and takes care of her and it's almost like this um you know Stockholm syndrome and she she's the one connected to Spectre uh. and she's doing things with her father and Safin and ultimately what Bond finds out in Matera is that she's the one that actually from a psychiatrist standpoint mm. connects Vesper to Bond like she's the one that says I've analyzed Vesper Oh. She's the one that's going to get under his skin. So now she's intentionally playing them. the Vesper role. So she's to get to Bond. playing well, and, or she's fallen in love with him. But she's the one that aligned Vesper and Bond. She's the whole part of the ribbon psychology mm. backtrack. And okay. so he finds this out and says, "So let me get this straight. So Vesper connecting to me, me falling in love with Vesper, Vesper dying. You had a hand in this, and you never told me." Mm. And she's like. Oops. Well, how could I have told you? You would you yeah. hated me, etc. To et me, that's one of the coolest speculations. Uh, I'll tell you one better now that you're talking. Yeah. I yeah, kind of yeah. wonder if maybe she could possibly be an unwitting ally to the baddies. Maybe there's like a Manchurian candidate moment. I like that. Where there's like a little code word. Yes. Order 66. And yes. she sort of does Order a bad 66. thing suddenly. <laughs> maybe. Wookie. <laughs> um, all right. So so there's been a lot of speculation. What's, what's the worst one you heard? What's it like, really? Come on. Um, is there any bad ones? I don't think I've, um, 
was I, there, Both there was escaping s- prison. You heard that one? No. Well, I mean, I kind of feel like that's a definite possibility. Sure. Um, the role he has in this, interesting. Um, there was one or two things that I was, I had a great answer for this, and now I can't remember. <laughs> How about you? It'll, it'll come to me while we're talking. What's that? The worst one? Yeah. Do you have any worst ones? You know, the, the one that I do not like is that Bond dies. I mean, that's okay. been a big one. I, I hope they don't Craig, uh, Craig off. <laughs> I hope they don't kill off Craig. <clears throat> I hope they don't kill off Bond. I hope they don't do that. I hope that he doesn't end mm. the movie not as 007. Whether mm. it's no me saying, you know what? Psh, you deserve this. Psh, go ahead. Because I think she is going to be 007. Or something happens where, yeah. you know, maybe she's a double agent. That would be kind of interesting. Mm. Or, you know, it's like... Bond, can you believe she was double-crossed at us? Guess what? You're the new 007. Yeah. Go for it, chum. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know whose impression yeah. that was. But, I mean, so so the the whole thing of him dying, I think, is horrible. And, and a bad marketing move altogether. Uh, I, 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 I can't see them doing that. Right. In fact, honestly, there there's I, I feel like that almost goes in line with all the people who are still sort of swearing up and down that this is going to be a woke James Bond. Even after the trailer, I'm like... You really still think that after this? I, I, I thought the trailer made it very clear this is a yeah. Daniel Craig, James Bond film. Uh, that Nomi will be a good, solid character. Yes. But is not there to upstage James Bond. Um, so, yeah, I, I think both of those, no, they, they, they wouldn't kill a Bond. I don't think so. I agree. Because, you know, again, if Eon, let's say they're losing steam for doing James Bond and they just want to kind of quietly go away and retire they're not going to kill off the character to do right. so because what if they want to sell the franchise? Um, you know, you can't sell a franchise. Disney's if you killed sniffing off around. Man. There you go. Um, Mouse house. Yeah. Uh, but I did remember the one that I was thinking of. The, yes. one, the only thing that, the one moment where I saw this and I said, ooh, I hope they know what they're, they know what they're doing. Um, when Bond turns the corner and sees Madeline holding the clipboard. Control. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of lose control. I'm yeah. not going to lose. I, I remember kind of thinking, okay, now this is interesting because it wasn't surprising that he would see her mm-hmm. at MI6 as part of this investigation somehow. Right. Um, they could have brought her in to question her about what she knows, what can you tell us about this organization, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact that she's there holding the clipboard looking as if she's working at MI6 kind of made me go, oh, no, wait a second. Uh, like, I'm going, of all the gin joints in all the world, you walked in the mine? <laughs> she, she's yes. there as, as an employee, literally yeah. investigating this thing that she just coincidentally is a part of. I kind of feel like either there's a reason behind that. I mean, mm. I, I can't, like, my worst case scenario, bad writing. Right. The uh, best case is that there's something behind that going on, and there's a reason why she's there in that capacity. Because I feel like if they literally just hired her to be working on the case... Eh, far-fetched. But again, I, I trust that there's going to be more to it than that. Yeah. But that was the moment where I kind of was like, all right, be careful, guys, because that, that could go. And there, there's going to be more speculation, I'm sure, as, as we go through. Yeah. By the way, this is probably a good time to take a small break as we fill up our champagne glasses because we're going to do something that we think is going to be kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. This was part one. Yeah. And part one was on, um, obviously, the Bond experience. You're watching it here. And it was really a retrospect, looking back on 2019. Yeah. Fun year, great yeah. year, mostly great positive. And now what we're going to do is we want you to head over to... Being James, James Bond. Bond. That's right. We want you to go over to their YouTube. We're going to put a link at the bottom to the link because that's going to be part two. And that's where we're going to be talking about 2020. Future yeah. state. Big time. You ready to jump? I'm ready. We'll buckle Let's do up. It. Here we go. Let's head on over. We'll see you soon. We'll see you over at Joe's page. Here we go. See ya.